Howdy folks, Colin Lay here, an attorney with Lay Roots, which is an amazing asset protection law firm. Today I want to talk about cost versus effectiveness when looking at the different types of asset protection trusts. So let's pop up a little slide here. I'm going to pop down here. And so here it is, effectiveness, effectiveness versus cost, comparing the cost and level of effectiveness when choosing an asset protection trust. So we have our axis here with um, effectiveness going along the horizontal line, less effective to the left, more effective to the right versus cost. So higher cost going up top on the vertical line and lower cost um, going down. So um, this creates these different boxes that you'll see. Um, so let's just get away higher cost, less effective. Definitely don't want to end up in that box for your asset protection trust. Uh, if we look at what would be more effective and higher cost, that would be your fully offshore trust. Fully offshore trust that has greater protections, greater laws that protect you from frivolous lawsuits, um, protects your assets from any type of litigation like that. But a, a fully offshore trust typically comes with higher costs because to have that trust, you, you might need to have that independent trustee in that offshore location. You're going to be um, having to comply with IRS requirements, reporting requirements. Um, so basically that has more of a tax cost every year. Going diagonal down, here we go. Uh, we have lower cost and less effective. So that would be your domestic asset protection trust. Now a domestic asset protection trust might cost less to set up, um, to establish than a, a fully offshore trust, but it might not. I, sh I certainly know people who, who charge more to set up the domestic trust than, than you would pay for a typical offshore trust. Domestic trust, though, is less effective because the because of the U.S. court system, and we've we've talked about this a lot. But um, basically, only certain states offer these asset protection trust laws, and if you don't live in that state and have assets in that state, then the case case law um, that have gone through the courts have shown that these trusts can fail. Basically, because if you lose in one court. A creditor can, can go to the court where your trust is based and demand that they get paid for their judgment. So the that's the, the big con for a domestic only asset protection trust. But the um, the benefit would be the lower cost, typically in the form of not having those IRS reporting requirements that can save you on your tax bill, your CPA tax filings every year. But our goal here at Lay Roots is essentially why pick one or the other. Um, so we have our prep trust, which is personal residence and estate preservation trust, which is a hybrid of the two, right? You're going to take the best of these different boxes and combine them. So the prep trust is a offshore trust. It, it is based on those better laws from offshore jurisdiction. It's registered in an offshore location. So you get the strength of that offshore trust, but then it's customized to be a domestic trust for IRS reporting requirements. So on the one hand, you have that strength of that offshore trust, but then every year you don't have to report the trust to the IRS. You don't have to tell the IRS what's in the trust. So Combine the two, strength of an offshore trust, ease of maintenance of a domestic trust, and you get a hybrid trust. So that is my favorite box, more effective and lower cost.